launched this channel back at the start of the new year, and here we are, nearing the end of February, heading into March, and I still haven't done an introductory booktube newbie video. This oversight feels a bit like a missed step in the journey of any budding booktuber, so here is my attempt to rectify this with a formal introduction and a setting of expectations. Hello, my name is Robert, but please call me Bob. I am a graphic designer with a background in science, specifically astronomy. I'm passionate about music production, creative writing, association football, I support Liverpool and Orlando City, and astrophotography. Here's a photo I took of the Orion Nebula this past winter. But by far, my first and greatest love is reading. I started this channel for several reasons, really, but chief among them would be to carve out a space for myself as a creative outlet, as an avenue for me to not only remain committed to my own creative pursuits, but also to tackle my deep-seated issue with crippling perfectionism. By adhering to a strict upload schedule, I am essentially challenging myself to break free from the endless cycle of wanting, needing everything to be perfect before sharing it with the world. Another significant reason is the realization that in my immediate real life circle, there are very few individuals who share my passion for reading. This lack of a community has left me yearning for meaningful discussions about the books I read. So I've turned to YouTube as a platform where I can hopefully bridge this gap and attempt to build that very community one video at a time. Well, I'd like to think that there are several distinctive elements that may set me apart. To begin with, my interdisciplinary background in astronomy and graphic design places me at a fascinating crossroads of science and art. This intersection provides a unique lens through which I explore literature, particularly science fiction and its various subgenres. My literary interests, however, extend far beyond mere genre fiction, and I also greatly enjoy classic literature, literary fiction, postmodern literature, and for some reason, I am interested in experimental fiction, though I have yet to have a truly successful experience with it. I also fancy myself a writer of sorts, and as a student of story, I love analyzing themes. So most of my reviews tend to dive pretty deeply into thematic analysis, examining the core elements that drive a narrative's success. By dissecting themes and unraveling the intricacies of storytelling, my goal is to offer viewers a deeper understanding and appreciation of the books I explore on my channel, and hopefully facilitate a discussion. What excites me most about this channel is the opportunity to engage with fellow readers. I'm eager to 
foster discussions and share recommendations. I'm really looking forward to discovering hidden gems and broadening my own reading horizons through interactions with viewers. For me, this channel represents a space where I can merge my passions for reading, thematic analysis, and creative expression. I love the artistry that goes into crafting a good book. I love experiencing excellent prose or a well-earned plot twist that <laughs> leaves me reeling. I love getting to know fully realized characters so well that they feel like old friends. I love spending time in worlds so meticulously crafted that they practically pulse with life. While escapism certainly plays a marginal role, it's the art of storytelling itself that truly enthralls me. The ability to transport readers to new places, to evoke powerful emotions, to provoke thought and provide insight. Perhaps my favorite part of reading fiction is uncovering the truth within the lie. Neil Gaiman says that one of the central tools of literature is using the lie of a made-up story to tell a human truth. This notion sort of distills the essence of storytelling, the ability to convey universal truths through the artifice of imagination. Whether it's unraveling the complexities of the human condition or shedding light on societal injustices, literature has this remarkable capacity to illuminate truths that resonate within us all. So when I was a kid, I read a few of the Narnia books. While they were enjoyable enough, I wouldn't say that they ignited my love of reading. I mean, they couldn't even ignite a desire to read all the books in the series. In middle school, I read Ender's Game, and I think that was the first time I can remember having my mind blown by a well-crafted plot twist. This may have been the first real spark that clued me into what books can be. However, it was during my high school years that my passion for literature truly blossomed, thanks in no small part to the genius of Kurt Vonnegut. From the time I first cracked open Slaughterhouse-Five, I was hooked and I swiftly devoured all of his works I could get my hands on. Cat's Cradle, Sirens of Titan, Breakfast of Champions, his short story collections. Vonnegut's wit was unparalleled. His satirical ingenuity, his profound insights into and sympathy for the human condition. They resonated with me in a powerful way, and to this day, he is still one of my all-time favorite authors. Most of my favorite booktubers seem to be fairly open books themselves. Here is a brief, disordered, and by no means comprehensive list of some of my favorite booktubers, all of whom have much larger followings than I. For starters, I'd love to hear each of their Desert Island Top 10 Books lists, complete with annotations detailing why these particular works hold so much significance 
for them. Specifically, I would probably ask Chris from Leaf by Leaf to go into detail about some of the most disappointing books he has read. As an overwhelmingly positive reviewer, he doesn't dish out a whole lot of negative criticism, which has got me exceedingly curious. Imposter syndrome. It's been a persistent challenge for me, one that I've been actively striving to overcome. For the past year, I have had the privilege of serving as a mentor for NASA's La Space program, a role that has been incredibly rewarding and humbling. Within this community, the mantra, you belong here, serves as a reminder of our inherent value and potential. Embracing this mantra has been instrumental in combating my imposter syndrome, but it's still a fairly constant struggle. Another hurdle I anticipate needing to not stumble over is the temptation to fixate on metrics and the inevitable disappointment that may accompany fluctuations in video performance. I can see that cultivating resilience here is key. Recognizing that success is a multivariate equation, but I think it's important to maintain perspective and prioritize the quality of my content over any numerical outcomes. Rather than allowing myself to become disheartened by fluctuations in viewership or engagement, my goal is to approach each upload as a chance to refine my craft and connect authentically with viewers and other readers. From a young age, I found myself reading at a level well beyond what was typical of my peers. But it wasn't until high school that I truly developed a deep-seated passion for reading. What I have come to realize is that there exists a chasm between competence and genuine affection for pursuit. For example, while I may possess a reasonable aptitude for mathematics, my heart has never been invested in the subject for any longer than it needed to be in order to pass a class. It wasn't until I discovered Vonnegut that I experienced that rare convergence of skill and genuine enthusiasm. This marked a turning point in my relationship with reading as I began to explore literature independently outside of academically assigned texts driven by this newfound love of storytelling. I have a few different preferred reading environments, but above all, I relish silence. It allows me to fully concentrate on the pages in front of me. I get my best, most focused reading done while sitting right here at my desk, but with my computer asleep in order to eliminate exterior distractions. I also read a lot in bed, I typically retire to the bedroom a few hours prior to actually turning off the lights and falling asleep in order to get in some good reading time. This is also normally when I read out loud to my wife. We usually, at any given time, have at least one book that we are experiencing together. We just finished The Human Division by John Scalzi, and we're about to start The End of All Things, which is the final book in the Old Man's War series. The variety of literature that I enjoy reading is eclectic, to say the least. So I have curated a list of 10 of my favorite books of all time. Once again, this is a disordered and by no means comprehensive list. 
purely for the purpose of exemplifying the types of books I like to read. Moby Dick. This is a book that I begrudgingly tackled in high school as a mandatory read that failed to hold my attention at the time. But upon revisiting it as an adult, I was so pleasantly surprised to rediscover this masterpiece with a fresh perspective. The friendship between Ishmael and Queequeg is one of literature's greatest bonds, and Ahab is without a doubt one of literature's greatest, most iconic antagonists with his quest for vengeance, elucidating the fateful dangers of obsession. Project Hail Mary. This book came into my hands last year thanks to a glowing recommendation from a good friend. It turned out to be an absolute delight, positively bursting with heart. While I usually approach amnesia stories with caution, the way this one unfolds is refreshingly unique. And don't even get me started on the friendship between Dr. Grace and Rocky. This book explores themes of resilience, ingenuity, and the power of personal connection in a vast and unforgiving cosmos. Highly recommended. Crime and Punishment. This is a challenging but rewarding book. It's an exploration of moral dilemmas and existential angst, and it really digs its heels into themes of guilt and redemption. Raskolnikov is a deeply complex character whose internal turmoil drives the story forward with an intensity that is at times quite harrowing. And Dostoevsky's understanding of human nature is perhaps unparalleled in literature. Use of Weapons This book has all of the typical trappings of space opera. Huge, larger-than-life space battles, galaxy-spanning adventure, mind-bending technology, alien worlds. And yet, it manages to transcend genre by staying deeply rooted in the humanity, or lack thereof, of its central protagonist, Zakawe. Thanks in no small part to its non-traditional narrative structure, the movie Memento lifted use of weapons' unique structure wholesale, practically beat for beat. Over the course of the story, we learn new and horrific information about Zakawe's past that shines a dismal light on this character in whom we have become deeply invested, forcing us to completely reevaluate our feelings about him. It's a dark and epic masterpiece. Seven Eves is a masterwork of hard sci-fi with one of the single greatest opening lines ever. The moon blew up without warning and for no apparent reason. This explosive intro sets the stage for a positively thrilling exploration of humanity's cunning and resolve in the face of extinction. It's divided into three distinct parts, each of which could stand alone as its own remarkable novel, but Stevenson stitches them together seamlessly with dedication to reasonable scientific accuracy to create a truly immersive experience. In many ways, Blood Meridian defies conventional categorization. It's a mean and violent book but that brutality is juxtaposed with McCarthy's masterful lyrical prose to create something truly and hauntingly unique. At the center of this book stands the terrifying figure of the judge, a character whose intellect and malevolence make him one of literature's most unforgettable antagonists. The fact that 
this book is based on historical events only serves to heighten its impact, underscoring the terrifying reality of man's capacity for violence and cruelty. Blood Meridian is not for the faint of heart, but its rewards are immeasurable for those who are willing to brave its dark depths. House of Suns is a truly epic space opera of positively breathtaking scope and imagination. But even so, Reynolds never loses sight of the human element, grounding the story with interesting and surprisingly relatable characters. This book has everything. Clones, robots, space-time warping weapons, sentient AI, ancient conspiracies, wormholes. It's a complex narrative that spans millennia, but at its heart, it's a book about very human themes of identity, memory, loyalty, and mortality. And the climax is absolutely spectacular. It's a clinic in the art of the slow burn that definitely deserves its place among sci-fi's greatest works. Roadside Picnic by the Strigatsky Brothers is an absolute triumph of speculative fiction. It is perhaps the single best example I've come across of how to effectively stir philosophical insight into an engrossing narrative. Red is a protagonist who could only have been born of the Soviet era. He embodies the struggles of a time and place marked by both ambition and repression. The story forces us to grapple with philosophical questions about existence, destiny, and the nature of the unknown and the unknowable. To say the ending is powerful would be an understatement. Words can hardly do it justice. It was so terribly beautiful that once I'd read the final sentence, I closed the book, set it down, and wept. And speaking of books that have brought me to tears, Infinite Jest. This is another major challenge, due in no small part to its massive encyclopedic scope. It's an immersive and painful journey through the depths of consciousness, addiction, and societal obsessions. Every single character in this book is a fully realized human being, flawed and complex and achingly relatable. Say what you will about the man, but David Foster Wallace wrote with an unparalleled empathy that breathed life into even the most minor characters. This is not an easy read by any means. Its sheer size alone demands patience and dedication. But for those willing to rise to the challenge, the rewards are infinite. And that brings us to Breakfast of Champions. As I have already stated, I love Kurt Vonnegut, and this is probably my favorite of his novels. It's fairly self-referential, so it almost demands that you've read a lot of his earlier work in order to fully appreciate this one. But I do believe that that's what makes this one so rewarding. Vonnegut, with his signature satirical wit, seamlessly mixes gut-busting humor with sobering truths about society, war, the absurdity of human behavior, and the ubiquitous influence of capitalism, all while maintaining a heart 
gut-wrenching sincerity. It's a razor-sharp and honest novel that really cements Vonnegut's legacy as one of the 20th century's greatest satirists. And that's it. That's all I've got for this video. Have you read any of these books that I've mentioned here? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I upload a new video every single week. Well, thank you so much for watching this and for listening to my long-winded ramblings. I don't typically like talking about myself, so this felt exceptionally awkward. I really appreciate you taking the time to get to know me and my reading habits, and I look forward to interacting with you all. I will hopefully see you in the next one. Until then, read on.